Um, I hope you all are safe and at your home maintaining social distancing to combat the situation that's going on. Um, I want to do my part and make some videos so I can help you um, learn some new things. Um, okay, so let's get started. Today's topic is actually going to be um, how to use next best actions and what are the situations, use cases to use it. And um, we, we will actually look at one um, based on this use case. So um, today's use cases are in general, next, next best actions are very useful when you want to assist your um, call center agents or um, salespeople to um, take certain actions on the record. And all these things can be done by directly embedding a flow. So you can actually do the same thing by in directly embedding a flow on the page and uh, you know display the flow uh, based on some um, record condition. And you, you can very well do that. But um, NBAs uh, are useful when, let's say you have so many actions that the agents need to take, and then you will end up with like four or five flows on the same page. And then you'll have to dynamically show or hide things based on uh, certain record criteria. In those cases, NBAs are really good because in my on my screen, you are only seeing one NBA because I have only one. But if you had like multiple conditions, you could actually show multiple, group them together. And they will only appear if they meet that condition that you are trying to, trying to recommend for. So I hope that made sense. Um, so in my current use case, um, the use case is um, actually if the case dot contact name email is empty, um, then I want to make sure the agent actually asks for their email. So let's say a call comes in, there's, they're on the case page, and the agent and um, this will already tell me, okay, update contact, there's no email. So, and I'm gonna say update contact and I can actually, and this, this screen that you're seeing is, um, it's a flow screen, so it's a screen type flow. And I'm gonna update it here and that's it. So uh, the email has been updated and basically if the page is refreshed, we will actually see there will be no NBA anymore because we just updated the email and we don't have any more recommendations because the email has been updated. Okay, so let's see how we actually build that. Um, so there are three things you will need to uh, or for in order to create an NBA. First step is you need to create a flow. It can be either auto launched or um, screen. If you need any information from the agent while they are um, launching the NBA, then you need to use a screen flow. Otherwise, you can also have it auto launched. Um, then there is a recommendation record, and make sure admin have access to the tab. So in my case, I didn't see the recommendation tab, but I had to actually go in the profile and make make it visible. So that's something to keep in mind. And then create a strategy using Strategy Builder. So that's um, that's basically the NBA builder. So it's very similar to Flow. So if you know Flow, you will have a pretty easy time um, getting into this uh, builder. And then you just need to drag and drop the NBA onto this record page. Okay. Um, so first thing first, we have a, a flow already here and I have it open here. So basically it's a very simple flow. Um, we are just getting the case records. That's the we're passing the record ID, getting the case ID. And then what I'm doing is getting the contact because I need to update the contact. So I'm just getting the contact directly and uh, you know, case where contact ID equal to case dot contact ID. Um, and then I'm, this is where I'm updating the stuff. So um, name and email. So these are the two different parameters I'm taking on the screen and that's what we have already seen. And all I'm doing is just updating that. So I'm just updating the email, first name, last name. Okay, um, and this is a screen type. So if I go here, this is a screen flow. And the name, if you see, is update contact details. So now the next step is actually um, creating a recommendation. And to get to that, it's just a tab. So um, it's called recommendations object. And there's an update contact. So the way you create this is pretty easy. So new, and you can also have an image. So 
obviously you want to make sure it's visually appealing and the CSR or the salesperson whoever you are building this for is actually seeing this um, are visible on the screen so you can add a very um, image you can get it from your business owners um, and the name will be contact recommendations or whatever and the acceptance label is actually what you're going to see on the screen so um, if I go back to our previous thing we saw something called accept flow or update contact so if I say update contact here that's what is going to appear on the on the page itself and there's a rejection label too and this is where you actually it will show you all the flows that is currently in your org all the active ones so you can associate a recommendation with a flow and this is where it's going to come up so um, I already have one and this is what it's called and obviously image and this is the update contact details that's the action uh, or rather that's the flow and that's it so once you have this you need to keep in mind you actually will need the ID later on so you just get it from the URL right here so that's the ID okay so once we have recommendation record now we go to the strategy builder so the way you do that is like with everything else you need to go to setup and you can start typing next best action and it's all under next best action but it's called strategies so and you hit new strategy I already have one so I'm just going to quickly show you what uh, what's here okay um, so uh, as you can see it's very similar to the flow UI uh, but there are some uh, differences as in so there is first thing is load what load does is you can actually load recommendation and you can say ID equals the ID I just copied. So that's recommendation ID. So if I click on this, uploading the object recommendation ID equals, this is the ID of my current recommendation. And that's it. Um, another thing to keep in mind is um, you can now actually run it on the object where it should display. This is important because if you are ma making it dynamic or filtering based on a record um, object page, then you need to make sure you have the object where recommendation display case. So basically when you're using a dollar symbol um, record, that's the object it is going to refer to, whatever you have here. Um, my name is op strategy because I was gonna start with opportunity, but um, this should be called case. Um, and then once you load, if you don't want this filter, you can actually avoid this filter. Uh, if you want the recommendations to appear every time, but in my case, I just want it only the recommendation only when the contact is not empty. Contact is empty. So um, one another thing, very important thing to keep in mind is that the filter is not uh, sorry the formula uh, filter expression or the formula builder is not as intuitive. So it still follows the um, formula fill syntax, but you have to actually type it here. So you actually have to say dollar record dot there is no uh, formula picker so that's kind of challenging or you know it, it needs a little bit of practice but record con dot contact dot email equal to null and that's like my filter only then they should appear and then this is very important um, it's a branch selector what it really does is selects this branch and outputs it and if there are multiple so you could have multiple recommendations loading um, based on certain different conditions and in that case you'll have separate branch for the different one and then separate branch and th at the end you'll also use a branch merge to actually merge all those branches together and then output it and there's a very quick cool feature here as well so you can see inspector you can actually uh, put your values here and um, take the case id if you because we are running on case and put it right here and see what happens since it says no results because I already have email populated there. If I didn't have email, then it would actually tell me what recommendation. And there's also another test here. So since this case does not has an email, um, we are saying Einstein does not have any recommendations for you. But if I go back to that same contact and remove that email from here, I'm just going to remove this email to make sure um, to actually show you um, 
how to test it. And this is very, uh, it's like debug button, uh, but in strategy builder. So if I go now test, I need to refresh the page. Okay, here. Um, so now if I say this, it's gonna show me the next best action because now it meets the criteria. Okay, so, um, all right, so we created the strategy builder or at least we saw another thing to note here is that the arrowing is very different. So let's say if you want to place filter before recommend uh, before load, it's like a little bit tricky to like how it, it actually maps it automatically, like based on where I move. It's a little bit different than the flow. Um, I found it a little bit challenging to get used to because the moment you move it, it just pair, pairs it immediately. Uh, versus in flow, you actually can drag and drop. I mean, you can take the end and put it on the top. Here it's like you don't have much control over, as you can see. So it just like takes a little playing around, but um, okay. So the next step is actually the fun stuff. So um, all we need to do is go to a page. So I'm just gonna show you real quick what it's called. Um, go to edit page or create a new page whatever um, and then in the components it's also called next best actions and there are some features I want to show you um, so Einstein, it's called Einstein next best actions and this is what it is um, and you can and most of the companies probably want you don't want to show this so you can hide that as well and you can say how many recommendations you want to show at a time maximum is four but if you have four recommendations I think that's pretty plenty um, and you can also hide so in the case where there is no recommendation you can just hide that so it looks cleaner and you can say show image hide image um, and there is a reject option and this is um, maybe I can make another video on this basically if the agent wants they can reject it if you show them the reject option I'm just gonna, not going to show it but let's say if you want to show a reject option you can also launch a flow saying okay what well, why did you reject and in that way, it will let you like monitor why why are your agents rejecting a recommendation, and then maybe there's a flaw in your flow, and then you can fix it. So that's really important here as well. Um, okay, um, I think that's all I wanted to show in this part. So if I go back um, now, you will see that hopefully that um, recommendation is gone because I already accepted it, and it did it did its job, and now. Actually, I removed the email again, so let's do that again. So accept and test at test.com. And that's it. Um, it doesn't dynamically refresh the page, but it does say accepted. So that means you're accepted. Next time when you come to the case page, you shouldn't see that because um, hopefully I hit it. Um, there you go. Okay. All right, so um, I hope that was helpful. Um, just dipping my toes in next best actions as well, and we are learning to this together. Um, I'll probably make another video uh, on more um, complex use case and maybe one or more than one recommendation on it. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.